Hello and welcome back to the Hellraiser, the long-awaited return of the Hellraiser blog. Uh, fight I'm going to look at today, surprise, surprise, is Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. It takes place on the 23rd of April at Wembley Stadium in London. Um, really intriguing fight. Two Brits fighting for the richest price in sport. Uh, when you've got uh, Tyson Fury versus Dillian White. Um, Fury's a heavy betting favourite, 6-1 to one on. Um, I don't think that it's particularly um, good betting odds for Fury because Fury um, has achieved maybe on a higher level um, and, and be more successful on a higher level. Um, so you could possibly say that his odds should be even sort of shorter than that. But it's a fight where if Fury does not switch his brain on 100%, and I say that um, I expect him to be 100%, but we've seen fights before where he doesn't seem to be motivated, he doesn't seem to be switched on, and it, I can't really see any pattern or any algorithm that particularly uh, allows us to predict whether he's going to be up for it or not. Um, if he comes in half-hearted, if he comes in... Uh, not completely switched on and not able to um, perform 100%, I think White is a huge banana skin for him. Because um, if you were to look at Tyson Fury and you had to decide like what are the best tactics to try and beat this guy, like Fury, uh, six foot um, nine, massive uh, 85 inch reach, he moves laterally with his feet incredibly for a heavyweight i mean he's, he's a one-off he is a a standout um boxer mover um technical boxer for for heavyweight he's uh you know like i say he's a one of a, a kind so to try and outbox him from long range i think there's we can just completely discount that and that would be suicide for for dillian white to do that i, I can't imagine he's going to do that i think what you've got to do against Tyson Fury and there's no guarantees even if you can do this very successfully that it would get you the result but I think you've got to get your feet in close you've got to go to the body early in the fight to try and slow Tyson Fury's feet down so that he doesn't have that amazing advantage that he has over nearly everyone that he ever comes up against because um, if you allow Tyson Fury to dictate the pace of the fight and the range of the fight and to, to use that lateral movement you've literally got close to zero chance of beating him and Dillian White I think is a big outsider here even if he can get his feet in close it's not that you get your feet in close and therefore you win the fight but it gives him a hope of making this competitive and maybe winning the fight um, Dillian White needs to get his feet in close early he needs to get big body shots in early he needs to um, get the respect of Fury because if Fury can just box at his own pace at the, the pace that he chooses to fight throughout um, then I think White has a, a minute chance here. Um, he, Fu Fury on his day, when he's boxing at the, the, the pace and the rhythm that he chooses to box at, um, for me, is a, a, a world-class athlete. White here needs to really put the cat amongst the pigeons, he needs to upset Fury early. I actually think it could be a very dirty fight early on. Um, if we saw, if you think like the, the biggest fights that, White's had really you'd say probably Anthony Joshua and that was quite dirty and then he hurt Joshua no doubt about it he hurts Joshua in that fight and he uh it, it was quite dirty there was a lot of um naughtiness at the end of one round and uh, it almost looked like it could get out of hand you know it was turning into a, a bit of a um an ugly scene um I think he has to do that here to stand a chance if if he go I want him to fight by the rules I want him to but I think if he if he does that in total, or if he allows this to turn into a pure boxing match, then I think Fury wins it. If it's a chess match type fight, Fury wins it. If Fury can box at the range, pace, um, and with the style that he wants, I think he wins it. White has to change that. He has to get in close. Now, just going to squeeze this in. I've actually got a good connection to both of these fighters. Um, Fury, I made his first ever pro fight. He boxed a guy called Bella Giongiossi. 
Dillian White boxed on a three or four of my shows early on in his career. And um, good to have that um, close contact with them early on in their careers because then it sort of gave me insight and also I, I followed them throughout. So Tyson Fury, I would say, is definitely the more impressive um, specimen of a heavyweight when you see them. He's very, very tall. He's got these massive long arms um, and he's so agile and moves incredibly, unbelievably quickly for a heavyweight and smoothly, naturally. Um, then you, you've got Dillian. Now, Dillian is only 6'4", Tyson Fury's 6'9", so you've got five inches already. Plus, Dillian tends to sit down on his punches a lot. He bends into a crouch. And uh, it actually works well for him because he moves his head laterally very well. And to slip jabs, Fury obviously is going to rely on straight punches to keep using that length, that reach advantage that he's got. And Dillian can, can use his head movement. He also needs to move his feet. He can't afford to just purely slip punches because if he does that, slip punches at long range but doesn't get in close, he won't be close enough to counter. So White needs to slip the shots, get his feet moving in close and land some bombs to the body early, early in the fight in the hope that that will reduce Fury's fleet-footed uh, tactics because if White stands off... I mean, that would be madness. If White stands off, I mean, he's never going to beat Tyson Fury in a pure boxing match. He 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 won't beat Tyson Fury, um, I think, unless he can really, really upset the apple cart. He needs to break the rhythm of Fury. He needs to... And this, that's easier said than done. And he needs to um, brutalise him to the body. Early. And Dillian is a very good body puncher. They call him the body snatcher for a reason. He's a huge body puncher. Um, I, mean, I don't want him, like I said, I don't want him to make this a dirty fight. But I think he, he here, for, to give himself a chance of winning, he has to do that. He has to get in close. He has to throw those heavy shots to the body because hitting Fury's head that moves constantly and it's at long range when you're getting these big long arms firing back at you I mean it's just a, it's not even worth thinking about he needs to get in close and even then I mean look Fury is very good inside for a tall gangly guy he fights very well he creates um he creates openings by punching the inside of the arms the gloves he also positions himself so he sort of takes out like I'd say Dillian White's best shot's probably his left hook or left hook to the body Fury will have prepared for that I, I would be very surprised if Fury hasn't got like a ready-made solution which will negate whether it's through movement whether it's through how he positions his guard um, how he positions himself in relation to White that stops White from being able to throw that punch and um I think Fury actually gets doesn't get the credit. He he's a lot better technically, um, even though we all talk about how good he is. I don't think people understand like the, the minute details that go into his preparation. I'm sure he will for this fight, and be very interesting to see what his tactics are, what his strategies are to counteract the the left hooking of of White, because um, White has. Um, I think a small chance. I don't even think he should be. I mean, like I say, Fury six to one on. But despite that, I think so. For me, White should probably be like a. a I'm not going to say twenty, but I'm going to say like maybe sixteen to one, shot. Um, but he could win it <laughs> if Fury's mind is not in the game. If Fury has become distracted by the next fight and all the other things that go on in promoting a fight there's not much press going on for this fight by the way so that won't be distracting him but you don't know with fighters you know th these things can happen things can come up that, that take their eye off the ball sometimes and if that has happened and Fury thinks this is a, a waste of time fight or it's an easy fight White is definitely good enough to turn this on its head um, whether he does it or not I think White like I say he does have a chance he needs we need to see a hundred percent 10 out of 10 dillian white listen i'm going to go for fury in round seven um by stoppage a lot of it depends on how the, the pattern of the fight goes but i think 
uh, Fury will turn up the pressure and um, smoke him out in seven. Guys, if you've enjoyed the blog, please hit the subscribe button uh, to the Hellraiser blog. And I look forward to seeing you again on future blogs. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.